another person who has a strong opinion is a guy, Sir Charles Barkley uh, from Alabama. Now, let me play you this cut, and I want to get your take. Uh, it, basically, he covers everything. The cops okay. have made some mistakes that don't give us the right to riot and shoot cops. We need the cops, especially in the black community. We as black people, we've got to do better. We never get mad when black people kill each other, which that always has bothered me. It has always bothered me. And then somebody's going to scream like, well, you can't change the subject. Well, first of all, I've never changed the subject. I've always said we as black people, if you want respect, you have to give each other respect. You can't demand respect from white people and the cops if we don't respect each other. So uh, I, I, we got to do better as black people. The cops have made some mistakes. Uh, but there's a lot of blame to go around. But I'm not going to get on TV and yell uh, like all these other idiots. Because, But I'm willing to sit down with anybody and have a constructive criticism. How I always tell myself as a black man, Am I part of the problem? Am I part of the solution? And if I'm out doing illegal stuff, stupid, I'm part of the problem. If I'm helping young black kids go to college like I'm trying to do, uh, if if I'm giving money to causes to help young black men get it, I know I'm part of the solution. Uh, I'm not perfect. I'm not trying to be perfect. But you have to ask yourself, are you part of the problem or are you part of the solution? I respect and admire what cops do. My my bodyguard is a cop, a black cop. We talk about situation all the time. And one of the problems with this, this stuff on the media, all these people are Monday morning quarterbacks. And you know what they are, Dan? They're Monday morning quarterbacks because they don't have the stones to play on Sunday. Everybody say what I would do or what I should do. I think some of these cops are panicking under pressure. Uh, you know, because I had a real in-depth conversation about my, with my bodyguard about the gun thing in Minnesota. You know, Dan, I'm a gun guy. And he always warns me, he said, do not put your ID where your gun is. He says, what I think, and I'm not saying, he says, I don't know whether we think the cop is right or wrong. First of all, everything is happening in fast motion. Everything's happening. Everybody get to sit back and see what happened. He says, what I think happened was that cop said can i have your id and then the next thing he said was i have a gun and he reaches and i think the cop just panicked i know but charles they're more likely to panic around black people because there's a fear well, Dan, because people. in fairness some black people out there they are crooks now you can't sit there and act like all the first of all, i'm saying in that situation there's a reason there's some, and I'm not saying that's right either. There is some reason why there's racial stereotype, because some of these black people out there are committing crimes. Let's don't sit there and act like all our hands are clean. Let's say, let me say, no, but Charles, that you can't be profiling like that. I understand. These guys are they're dealing with criminals every day, and that's easy for you to say. That's easy for you to say. Uh, and like I say, I'm not saying they should racial profile guys. I'm saying that's wrong, but I'm saying. We can't jump to conclusions every time, like, it's because a guy is black. First of all, there is racial profiling. There's always been race, racism. There's, and first of all, there's racism on both sides. Let's get that straight. But to just assume, first of all, if you go back and look at that thing in Louisiana, I think those cops clearly overreacted. But there's no doubt in my mind if I'm fighting with a guy and I hear somebody scream gun and I got a gun, I'm going to shoot the guy. And like I say, the cops probably did overreact in both situations. But we got to we got to look at the big picture. Let's work with the cops because we need the cops, Dan. If it wasn't for the cops, we'd be living in the wild, wild west. And let me get this right. Cops have made mistakes. But as a black person, every time you try to say, hey, listen, we still got to do better. But like I say, and like and I say, why don't black people get mad when we kill each other? And I'm not trying to deflect or place blame. That's just a fact. That's not true, Charles. That's yeah, it not, is true, Dan. Not, Why don't, Dan, first of all, you're not black. I know I'm not black, but that's not true that black people don't get mad that other, that other black people are killing black people. That's we not don't, true. We don't have near the outrage we do when a white cop kills somebody. Dan, I've been black my whole life. Most black people I know are killed by other black people, and I've never understood why there's not this more outrage the way we treat each other as black people. 
It can be both, Charles. It can be both. But, Dan, first of all, if you're going to sit on TV and say there's the same moral outrage when black people kill each other, when white people kill each other, that's just disingenuous on your part. We done? No, we're not done. I can talk to you any time, Dan. You know I love talking to you. All right, hold on a I second. Because I think you always try to be fair. All right, hold on. But – I know, I'm not letting you just go say stuff and get away with it. I haven't it. said anything. What have I said? Stay there. No, I'm just saying, just don't tell me there's the same moral outrage when black people I kill each other. I didn't say it was the same. It's okay, both I just both. want you to know that because that offends me even more when I hear people, when black people like, dude, we got to stop killing each other because to get respect, you have Wow, some strong tongue uh from uh... – Hall of Famer Charles Barkley. What is your thoughts, Joey Jackson, as you hear this? Well, I, I have a few thoughts. Number one, certainly he's been outspoken all of his life. You know what you're going to get through Charles <laughs> Barkley. He, he never is afraid to state his opinion. Uh, never. And, and he says some he says some things that I think are very credible and very important and true. And he says other things which I don't know that he really should be saying, and here's what I mean by that. I would begrudge no one saying anything. We have a freedom of speech and First Amendment. But I don't think that you could make opinions about, oh, well, he probably shot him talking about the CEO in the car because he was probably reaching for his wallet and it was with his gun. I mean, how does he know that? Uh, you know, it, I, I think He's that, making, you know, know assumptions. clearly I, I don't think you can speculate and make assumptions when a life like that is taken. We've all seen the videotape, and unfortunately right. we saw the videotape uh, too late because we don't know specifically what led to it. But I just take umbrage with anyone who would speculate as to specifically what occurred in an effort to justify that it might have been, it may have been justified. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, it clearly appeared uh, to be some type of overreaction. The officer, when they, uh, after it was over, when the girlfriend was there, seemed to be saying, hey, I told him, I told him. The officer seemed to be panicked and shook and se- seemingly hysterical. Uh, so I would just take umbrage with him attempting to justify that. I also would take umbrage with him justifying the other shooting, suggesting when a cop yells gun, he panicked and shot him, and, you know, what do you expect him to do? I think that what I would expect any law enforcement officer to do, who I have tremendous respect for, and I think they serve a smart dignity, uh, and protect people and save people, and I, I, I think we owe them a debt of gratitude. There are some who don't. And in this particular instance, I don't think you can justify a shooting by saying, well, his partner, he said he had a gun. So he blasted him away. I would expect the level of professionalism. I would expect the level, uh, you know, uh, of of uh, training that goes along with what you do. I mean, clearly, I can't do what a police officer does, but there's a reason they do what they do. And so the fact that they yelled "gun" alone for Charles Barkley to say, "Oh, well, hey, you know, he yelled gun," that that, that makes sense. Uh, you know, I don't think someone deserves <laughs> to die. We have a Second Amendment right that allows people to carry guns. So. If I have a gun, I should be shot? I mean, okay, I, in the event that his arm, which is the critical issue, they're going to look at his arm and where was his arm relative to that gun. If, if it demonstrated that his arm was attempting to grab that gun, and it seemed to me that he was pinned down and under control and no need for him to be shot, but if on the further investigation when everything comes out of his arms near that gun, okay. But I don't think Charles Barkley saying, oh, well, he yelled gun and shot him. The, the, the issue I have with him is him attempting to justify the police conduct. And, again, I just want to be very clear. I think we need to respect police. I think retaliation of any yeah. kind is outrageous. It's despicable. It's deplorable. It should right. never happen. I agree with him that we need the police. The pol- you know, the police need communities. But I don't agree that you justify things. The, the other issue, uh, you know, with respect to him talking about outrage, no one's ever outraged. I mean, I'm outraged when anybody's shot and killed. You know, it's it's just it's just oh, yeah. wrong. Uh, you know, but I think certainly there needs to be more uh, within the African American community of a coming together, of a unification, of a discussion about black on black crime. Clearly, there needs to be that discussion. Uh, but I think that I'm certainly outraged when I see killing of black and black, of white and white, of yellow and purple. I think you know when you shoot people for and engage in senseless violence, it's just offensive to our notion of humanity. So, you know, I just think that uh, he certainly packed a lot into it. He's certainly entitled to his opinions. 
the only thing I take umbrage with him saying is really attempting to justify what had occurred. Uh, and and I think that you know that that certainly uh, would would not be appropriate. But you know Charles is Charles, and Charles is going to do and say what he feels <laughs> he needs to do and what he needs to say. Yeah, that's why 